Yo, that was a complete win and a great way to end the regular season. Miami Hurricanes over Boston College on the road, 45 to 20. Let's talk about it. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So uh, for the seventh time in a post game, I've got a smile on my face today. And this is actually the first time we've been able to do a post game live stream. And I know we're a few hours removed from the result, but I always do radio uh, after the games on WQAM. And since this is finally, you know, I, I was out of town last week, but since we finally had another noon game, we're able to come at you live. Uh, I come with friends today. We introduced this man uh, to our channel a couple of weeks ago. My guy, Rudy Tamarchio. He's a fellow WVUM Miami radio alumnus. He's also a former Sebastian the Ibis. So you could strongly argue he has committed more to Miami athletics than I ever have or ever will. Rudy, how are you, man? Uh, we just have to start this show off with an old school Alex Dono extravaganza. Yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> because watching that game, that's how it felt, like just as the game continued going on. You know, um, first thing, uh, I've got to give Tyler Van Dyke his props, Rudy. I, I don't know if he has a future in Miami after this game because, you know, he, he might be in the transfer portal when it opens on December 4th, or he might decide to run it back for another season. Uh, I don't know if he'll be a available for the bowl game or not, but I got to say what Van Dyke, you know, we've criticized him on this channel, rightfully so throughout the year. He took his lumps. He had some awful games in the middle of the season. Uh, the way Van Dyke has responded since being benched against Florida state gets the start against Louisville last week. He was not the reason Miami lost that game, had over 300 yards, a touchdown pass, no interceptions. And he followed it up with another nice performance against Boston College. Van Dyke goes 23 for 36 today, 290 yards, two touchdowns, once again, zero interceptions. And that was just these last couple of weeks, but especially today because Miami got the dub. Body language, smile on his face. Uh, this It's a version of TVD we hadn't seen since September. Yeah, you kind of wrap up the regular season for him with a pretty little bow for today's performance. I mean, he... You saw almost a little bit of Tyler Van Dyke's season in the entire game. Like there were some parts where he looked really, really good. There's some really great decision making, some moving around, the most mobile we've seen him since his, you know, games against Texas A and M and and Temple. But then there were obviously a couple mistakes too. Some kind of wide open guys that you probably can, if you have your feet set, you could throw to. Uh, there was that goal line possession with Colby Young, just kind of wide open on that little scrub route. Just go, yeah. what, what, what are you doing? Yeah. But you know, the way he responded from some of the mistakes was was really what was put a smile on my face was watching that missed exchange with A.J. Allen. Obviously, he missed a lot of time this year, too. And then them coming back out the next possession, defense gives up the touchdown and they just run it down their throat again. Like that was it was nice to see that they didn't let mistakes hurt them more than just that immediate moment in the game. You know, this has been talked about a lot. Uh, I've you know everyone I follow on X has been bringing this up. Um, game plan wise, play calling wise, I, I thought this was the best Shannon Dawson has done all season long. And it was like Miami's offense was so good and so fluid today. Uh, I was watching the game with my father and like my father was, you know, whatever happiness he had for Miami playing well was outweighed by his anger that they hadn't been calling plays like this all season. Like my dad kept saying, it's like, where has this been all season? Where has this been all year? And, and it, you know, for everyone who's been wondering, where's the motion? Where are the end arounds? Where are the trick plays? We got a little bit of everything in this game from the Miami offense. It was really funny to hear Dan Mullen on the commentary say, oh, look, the guy's in motion. You know, they're running man coverage or, oh, it's a zone. Let's see what Tyler does. We're sitting there going, yeah, we know, Dan. We were waiting for this <laughs> all year long. I was waiting for it in the NC State pregame show that we did, saying use yeah. that pre-snap motion to determine what the defense is. You know your read after that. And it was one of those where, yes, did you know that we had tight ends on the team? 
Uh, I I had forgotten, uh, and, it, and it's not like they played great today, but they did. They caught two balls apiece. Cam McCormick had two catches. Riley Williams, who, by the way, Riley Williams has a very bright future. I don't want anyone to judge his true freshman year and say that's what he's going to be. Riley Williams, watch that guy at IMG Academy. He is a stud. Yeah, and just it, it, regardless of the number of catches they made, you saw them being targeted a lot more. You're yeah. seeing some of these different pieces. Like there were some – formations that I thought during the NC State game or during like the Louisville game, I'm seeing them set up right there like on the end of the line. I'm going, okay, chip and a seam route, and this guy's going to be like wide open, and this never got targeted. So I don't know if that's Tyler's, you know, maturity in the last couple of games of finding them more and looking for them instead of trying to take a deep shot, or they're just being more featured in the offense now. I don't think you could put that on Shannon Dawson. I think this was the like perfect symphony of his play calling being – executed the way that you hope because there were so many things between a couple of wheel routes didn't go Miami's way but they were in motion trying to block for them or the tight ends coming out or like watching a couple of routes that were crossing not like scrub routes but there, there's just a few spaces that you go oh they're exploiting holes in the defense this is great those fourth down conversions where it's just an option route and because you have such a veteran like Xavier Restrepo you can you can complain about him being targeted too much, but then when you have coverages like that where, hey, he knows the open hole in the defense, just toss it up. It's an inexperienced defensive back. Boston College's secondary was marred with injuries, so you knew they were going to be a little a little shallow there in terms of their, they're not going to have a lot of depth. He made his guy look foolish. Oh, yeah. Multiple times. Multiple so, times, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I thought sticking on that point, um, you know, I, I praise Tyler Van Dyke for playing well. He, he did, you know, he missed a couple of opportunities at potential touchdown throws, but I'm happy with the way he played. But I, I thought that probably the two offensive MVPs, Restrepo, who you mentioned, who he didn't get into the end zone, but those fourth down conversions were as good as touchdowns. And I think both of them led to touchdowns, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Uh, Restrepo, for the second straight week, eclipses a 100-yard mark. He was... ACC receiver of the week last week. This week, he has six grabs for 117 yards. Two of those were on fourth down, had a fourth and four. And these were both deep down the field. They weren't like, hey, right at the sticks. Fourth and four conversion, fourth and eight conversion. I thought Restrepo was fantastic today. And Henry Parrish was my other MVP today, Rudy. And it's like, it's this weird thing. And it's great. It's a luxury of depth. But it's like week by week, you don't know who the top running back is going to be, right? I mean, the guy who's been the most consistent for the last month has been Mark Fletcher. Mm-hmm. Fletcher started the game today. He earned that with how well he played last week. And then it ends up being Parrish, who has the hot hand. And Henry Parrish, they averaged 10 yards per carry, 11 carries, 111 yards, two touchdowns. You know, Broke off a, a 38-yarder today. We haven't had enough of those explosive plays in the running game. I thought Parrish was fantastic. And it's like, you know, not to think too far ahead, but if I'm looking at at next year, my, Miami's got at least two running backs coming in and recruiting. You know, Kevin Riley and Chris Wheatley Humphrey. Uh, you know, Chris Johnson is another freshman who barely played this year. He's a track star. I think he's going to be a dangerous weapon. Obviously, you've got Fletcher. Parrish has got another year of eligibility. Don Chaney has got a couple more years uh, of eligibility. AJ Allen is just in his second year. I think he's got three years of eligibility left after this overall so it's like it's a good problem to have but you know some running backs will probably have to leave just because I don't think we can have like eight guys on the roster I I don't know I mean it's I think one of the stories of this regular season so far is what could have been if our running back room stayed healthy throughout the year because with all the talent that you had you know there's multiple times where (laughs) that those four guys that maybe one or two were really healthy and available last week you know Coach Cristobal said that A.J. Allen would probably be healthy, but we really didn't see him last week against Louisville. And he was great against against uh, Boston College today as well. I mean, Henry yeah. Parrish, wonderful game, being able to bounce it outside when it's not there. I think if you see the different backs and the running styles, they all complement each other really, really well. And, yeah, and I did I did forget. I forgot about Trevante yeah. Citizen. You're right. That's another one. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I think it shows just how important in college football it is now to have such a deep running back room because you need those different guys, whether it's a, it's a, it's a change of pace, whether you have different styles of running that exploit your defense, but also just having somebody healthy so that in the third quarter, fourth quarter, you hand it off to somebody who's got fresh legs who could just continue pounding the ball because that, I mean, that last touchdown run from A.J. Allen, oh. yes, it was a nail in a coffin, but it was also an exclamation point for your team. You cash in off the turnover 
and you're just running it down their throat. And that's something that Boston College, granted, they're six and five, but their identity for the past two coaching staffs, three coaching staffs, has been run the ball down your throat, put in as many offensive linemen as you can. So that's great for everybody at Miami. I mean, they were they were obviously pumped up for a reason, and it was great to see. You know, I had some people who were commenting on my radio post game. It's like you sound way too excited. We just beat Boston College. I'm like, oh, you realize. Uh, M- M- Miami rarely ever gets comfortable wins in the ACC in case you mm-hmm. haven't noticed and Boston College they came in with the same record as Miami playing at home and Boston in November has always been a tricky place for Miami to play uh, and you know uh, I thought that was a quality win we haven't seen a performance like this probably really since the Temple game and I, I, yeah. think, I think BC is probably at least a little bit better than Temple I mean Boston College gave Florida State a hard time earlier this year. So we have so much we still have to unpack from this one. Haven't even talked about the defense yet. We're going to do that on the other side. We've got to talk some big picture stuff after a seven and five year. Uh, we will be finding out relatively soon where and against whom Miami will play their bowl game. I have some thoughts on who I'd like to play, maybe where I'd like to play, where I wouldn't like to play. So we have so much to get to, man. We're only getting started here and we are live. I think this is the first time we've done a live stream here on Locked on Kane. So uh, the live chat, we're going to be pulling up you guys' comments, answering some of your questions. And if we say something dumb, feel free to correct us, as some of you have already been doing. But you want to keep it locked right here, my friends. We are only getting started on this episode of Locked on Canes. And I am only getting started with eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today or your last listen tonight. Whatever it is, we got Rudy Tamarchio with us breaking down this 45 to 20 Miami Hurricanes win at Boston College. So, you know, Rudy, I thought my offensive MVPs on the offensive side of the football, I thought Xavier Restrepo and Henry Parrish on defense, he's been great all season. Kiko Maui Noah, number 51, he's everywhere on the field all at once. Uh, he has two TFLs and a sack and a team high nine tackles today. Uh, you you could make the argument he might be Miami's best find in the transfer portal. I know some of the offensive linemen are in that conversation, but Kiko Maui Noah, he was a godsend in the portal. He's your best defensive find in the, in the transfer portal for sure if you want to yeah. make that argument and say he's not the best overall find. But, I mean, you can't say enough. Yeah, the nine tackles were wonderful, but the, the spots that he was put in to make – the saving tackle where he probably saved a couple of big plays and also just some of the hits with authority that he made. I mean, there were some shots there where, yeah, he may be one-on-one, but he knocks the guy backwards on a few of these different plays and seeing, seeing him fly around the field was really, it's great to see because we've been missing a linebacker like that for a while. The last one, I mean, granted we had a great linebacking core a couple of years back, but in terms of having a single linebacker that really kind of takes over the game like that, I hadn't seen since Denzel Perryman. Yeah. At Miami, and then cool. looking at just middle linebackers, you go back to, you know, you go back to Jonathan Vilma, you go back to um, trying to think of DJ Williams is a great linebacker, but middle, middle linebackers, I'm looking a freshman year. Romeo Davis had some great yeah. mobility yeah. in terms of what he did for having to step up. Obviously, a lot of injuries to him, but like I compare a lot of this Miami team to like those like early 2000s, like post peak. I'd say like that 2004, 2005, where they had excellent offensive line play, but would have issues with quarterback play and offensive struggles. But the defense kept them in a lot of these games. And that's what the season was, really. I mean, minus Louisville and UNC, where I think were probably two of the worst defensive performances yeah. of the year. Your defense kept you in every single game. And today was no different with the linebacking play. Defensive line play looked pretty good. Yeah, sure tackling too. Like outside of that, that first drive was 
was yeah. really a masterpiece. Yeah, I, I thought it was funny how like, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm getting tweets and, and comments. And by the way, you guys can join our Locked on Canes Insiders chat. I include a link in the show description below. You One-on-one -on -one text directly from my phone to your phone and vice versa. And I give you guys also breaking news, recruiting scoops and stuff like that. I, I was getting comments after that first drive. So, you know, uh, Boston College had the ball and they cut like they cut through Miami's defense like a, a hot knife through your Thanksgiving turkey like I, and then I was I started to get comments from people like that's it this team has quit no effort I'm like you're not gonna give it more than one possession like you're not and, and obviously Miami didn't quit and Rudy that that to me is probably my biggest picture takeaway this year and I've been for the last couple of days I've been shouting out one of our listeners BP who sent me this uh, detailed statistical breakdown earlier this week about, you know, Miami, their seven losses last year were by an average of like 22 points uh, in the losses where their five losses this year were by an average of about eight points. And we haven't seen Miami quit all year, whether it's, you know, down 10 points after making a couple mistakes against Texas A&M. A lot of people thought that day they were going to roll over and quit or, you know, yeah, the open the way that they played the first half against Virginia was pretty brutal. You know, the opening drive on defense today. Yeah, you know, this team never quit. They obviously they you know they they lost five games this year, so they were far from perfect. But one of my big takeaways from the season was you're seeing the competitiveness get to a point where you're clearly moving closer from point A to point B. Like point C would be championship caliber football. Miami's not at that level, but. This is not the same team from last year, and I feel like they're they're better than two wins greater than they were last year. It's unfortunate the record doesn't have more to show for it than seven and five. The record really doesn't show what the team is capable of doing and what they really have been showing most of the year. I think, yeah, it's one thing to say it could be like a moral victory that the team doesn't give up and that they fight, but it's something that we really haven't seen from a Miami Hurricanes team in quite a while in terms of just continuing to fight through all four quarters, keeping the games close and just continuing to pound away. That's something that, yeah, they did. A, that's what they did all year long. And it's something that we're obviously very proud of as fans and also watching just the progression of this team from one year to the next, how, how drastic it is. But yeah, defensively, that first drive, that first offensive possession, the opening kickoff for, uh, for Boston College was as bad as it got for the defense. Just there was a lot of bad angles. There was bad tackling. In some cases, there was a lot of whiffs on tackles but after that first drive i mean they they put it together which was nice to see i was still scared as always when it comes to wheel routes because it seems like i was texting you during the game yeah saying you know we've lost to wheel routes for the past 20 years like i think there's three different plays on offense that we continuously get beat on ever since larry coker was the coach it's the little tight end late release sneaking across the middle of the field it's the running back wheel route we lost our one and only chance really at the ACC championship in 2004 to a wheel route and a missed tackle. And then uh, the last one is just like a random post route because someone's yeah. missing an underneath and it's just, that's just what it is. And that's every ACC offense that we've ever seen because nothing really changes in that end. The only thing we know is we keep getting older. We're almost 40 and the kids stay the same age. So these are always going to be 18 to 20 something year olds who are seeing wheel routes and underneath tight ends for the first time, every time. I, 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 I want to get your opinion on whether, whether you think Tyler Van Dyke is back at Miami next year. I, I think, no, I just, I, and this is from both sides, like from a Miami point of view, he's just been so inconsistent. And there were, there were so many occasions this year when he was struggling and you're just looking at it from our point of view. You're saying, like, Miami is a competent quarterback away from winning some of those games that they lost, right? Yeah. Uh, and then from TVD's point of view, it's been such a roller coaster these past two years. I would not blame him whatsoever. And, and by the way, I really like Tyler Van Dyke. Great young man, tremendous family. I wish him nothing but the best. I think even from his point of view, I don't, I don't think he's an NFL prospect right now. Like, I don't think he would get drafted if he declared – so I think he probably is looking at final year of eligibility, find a good situation in the transfer portal. I don't think Van Dyke is back next year, and I think it's probably a mutual decision to part ways. Do you agree, or do you see it going down differently? Uh, everything, I just want a disclaimer, everything I say is nothing is personal. Everything is just going to be as objective as I think. If, yeah. if I was representing Tyler Van Dyke or something like that, I would be 
kind of saying the same thing, but without, obviously I don't have any connection to the program. I'm just a former Sebastian. I've been in some locker rooms. I've, okay. I've heard some chatter, not with anybody currently, but the way I looked at it is I thought that NC state game was kind of like the last of let's see what we got out of Tyler, if he can do it. And just given how the way the rest of the season's kind of come about, I'm so happy he ends the regular season on such a great note. But I think after that NC state game, the writing was on the wall to say this yeah. was his last year. Actually, we even go as far as saying the preseason going into this year that this was Tyler's last year at Miami. Regardless, we were hoping he yeah. would end on a, you know, we'd, we'd end up with a, with one loss or undefeated and possibly playing for a, a playoff spot. And he can go to the NFL and see how that works. But given the way that the season goes, I think this is his last year at Miami. Regardless, I think he does hit the transfer portal, probably ends up at like SMU with Rhett Lashley because he's thrived in that system. You could put up a lot of numbers. You may not win a lot of games based on how you're, you know, defense works out in those, but you look great. You throw for a bunch of yards, a bunch of scores. And honestly, I think that might be the best way to go because I think what you've seen from Tyler's play is that when he's on, he's great. Yeah. But when he's off, he's <laughs> it's hard to win games when you're not having like that, those type of numbers. So I think at this point, if you're looking long-term for Miami, you kind of have to part ways at this point and just look in the future and try with the next guy. Because if even if he were to declare and come back, it's going to be stiff competition. Yeah. You've kind of seen everything you have, and you don't know where the next quarterback ceiling is. Whether, as you've said earlier the, in the season, they go into the transfer portal and get themselves a veteran quarterback, or if you get Emory Williams who steps in the starting job, or if Jakari Brown stays and competes and ends up winning the starting job himself. You don't know what you see, so somebody else is going to have a turn next year at Miami. I would love to know not only from Rudy, but for everyone uh, in the live chat, if there's if there's a quarterback out there you want to target. Now, Will Rogers from Mississippi State, who's a pretty good veteran quarterback, I think he announced last night he intends to leave uh, in the transfer portal. So he's already made that decision. I know there's been a lot of rumors about uh, Michael Pratt from Tulane, who I, I think they're still playing right now. In fact, yeah, it's uh, they're up 29 quarter. to 10 right now. Yep. Yep, so their game is so let me see how Pratt is doing tonight, actually. Because uh he's not for sure hit he may announce it tonight. Actually, he's not played they haven't needed him that much. I guess he's nine for 22, 125 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. They're still up big. Uh, but Pratt is someone that's been rumored. And obviously Miami's got Louisiana uh, connections on the coaching staff. Uh, I think there's there's got to be an odd man out or two at Georgia because they're they're gonna be they're gonna be stuck uh, you know, behind uh behind one of the better quarterbacks in the country for a couple of years. There's going to be an odd man out in Texas with yours likely to come back. Uh, so I, I don't know, man. I, I think Miami's got to go portal shopping. And, and that's that means nothing to – I'm not downplaying Emory Williams. I think Emory Williams can be great. But I don't want to put all my eggs in his basket when he's going to be a true sophomore coming off an injury. Uh, I would like to bring in a veteran to compete, if not you know, kind of be the caretaker for that job for a year or two. If you're the coaching staff, you're saying competition breeds better talent. So competition definitely helps. If you're getting a veteran player, whether they end up starting or not, you've got great competition for your quarterback situation. Also, let's stir the pot a little bit and just say, you know who's at that Tulane game right now? Ed Reed with his oh, family yeah. after Thanksgiving. So yeah, yeah. maybe some, some, some prognosticators in the chat and on Twitter, everybody looks into that a little bit further than I do, but it's just found that kind of funny. And by the way, Desmond, I am reading the chat. He's, he's accusing me of not reading the chat. I mean, did, did I miss something important that you said? Uh, I, I think it's just that your shirt is so loud that it's hard yeah. to see the chat. Yeah. But. All right. So I, I do want to talk about possible bowl game scenarios when we come back. So what you want to do, my friends, don't go anywhere. You want to keep it locked right here. We are not done yet on this episode of Locked on Canes. Folks, I used to get stressed out at the idea of last minute ticket buying. I look forward to it now because of the Game Time app. You get the best deals. I have directed multiple listeners throughout the season to day before or day of $1, $3, $4 Miami Hurricanes home game tickets. You're getting deals like that on the regular at game time guys these last minute tickets they need buyers game time is the great place to go whether you're looking for tickets for the next sporting event for the next musical theater show for the next concert comedy show you can find everything in your area on the game time app and guys 
not only can you see your seat view, they have exactly what you're going to be looking at from your seat right there on the app. So, you know, I'm getting good tickets. They also have something called the game time guarantee. What the game time guarantee means, if you find a ticket in the same section or row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on college that's all one word by the way locked on college and they'll give you $20 off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed thank you so much for making locked on canes your first listen or your late night listen whenever you're viewing this if you're with us on the live chat I am reading the live chat I promise you Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Rocky, I, I think we've, we've, Rudy and I both feel Van Dyke probably not back in 2024. I think it's in everyone's best interest to part ways, but I, I wish him the best. Like, I, I want to see him succeed and have a bright future. Um, so, Miami seven and five. I've, I've seen a lot of links to that Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl in El Paso, where Miami seems to go. I've seen a link to, the Military Bowl, Gasparilla Bowl. What do you, where, first of all, where, Rudy, do you think Miami ends up? We're not going to El Paso because nope. the only time Miami goes to El Paso is when they fire their head coach. Yeah. <laughs> Every single time. Every single time. Al Golden was in the commentary <laughs> box when they fired Randy Shannon against Notre Dame. Uh, then Mark Richt was in the yeah. commentary box and they fired Al Golden. And then Mario Cristobal was there for the yeah. Sun Bowl. So, like, right. I, I don't think we're going to, to El Paso. I I, I don't know. I guess we don't have a connection to Shreveport anymore because I know that we usually end up there. Ooh, it's like yeah, a lower game. I don't know about that. I, I don't I, I, I always the tie ins always confuse me, especially with all the conference realignment. I don't know who goes to what. I just know Sun Bowl. Yeah. There is still a tie in. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know if the pinstripe bowl is still a thing or not. I was mm. that was miserable. I went to that yeah. game against Wisconsin. It wasn't so much oh. that the game was miserable, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. for anybody who if you're planning on going. Don't get the seats closest to the field because that's a baseball stadium and the sight line is not the same. See, if you had been on the game time app and you could look at your seat view, you would have known. I saw when you did this. That was that was a great plug for showing how you could see your seat view. <laughs> and if the code doesn't work, try it in all caps, just in case. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, okay. So um possible opponents like the one that would excite me and most of you the most because they just never play each other would be usc it, it is a possibility it looks like both teams probably will have seven and five records even though like you may not actually see caleb williams because there's a pretty good chance he opts out of that bowl i don't know why he would play in the sun bowl or whatever uh but miami versus usc regardless of who the quarterbacks are that would be exciting to me uh, Utah has been thrown around a lot as a potential opponent. I think that would be pretty cool. We were, t I think it was off air. We were talking about, Hey, Cristobal, Cam McCormick versus Utah. There's a lot of history there. Yeah. Coach Cristobal would be foaming at the mouth to play Utah again, just because of what Utah gave Oregon in his last year, even his last couple of years, because I think he beat Cristobal either two or three in a row to keep them from the PAC 12 title and just, talk about physical style of football and two guys that want to out physical each other with their teams. That's Utah. And that's crystal ball with first Oregon and now Miami. So I think both would be really great matchups. I would love to play USC. One is somebody who always liked watching USC yeah. for a while. I thought they were kind of like the Miami of the West when it came to how much they were hated in some of their more successful years at Matt Liner, Reggie Bush, Lendale white and all of those guys. But uh, I would love to play them because, I mean, granted, even if you don't see Caleb Williams, as uh, Rocky likes to say, their defense isn't quite that good, but we're also probably not going to see our best offense. Right. If, will we talk about later to see what happens in that? I think it's just an interesting matchup because these bowl games, it can only give you momentum going into the offseason to work with. And if you could say also, you're, you're coaching against Lincoln Riley, who's probably been one of the biggest you know, winners of the transfer, transfer portal. You didn't really see the success this year. You saw it last year with yeah. their team and how much they turned over the roster, like 50% or something like that, or 45%. I think there's a recruiting aspect in playing USC to say, oh. look what we're doing with our freshmen. Again, it's kind of like the same narrative with Florida State, but against another national power that has had, granted, they don't have the success this year with their record, but when USC is good, the spotlight is always on them. And by the way, you're right. Everything you said is correct. And even – 
a win like today is really good for recruiting because everyone ate today, right? You you can yeah. show any quarterback, hey, this is what you can do in Shannon Dawson's offense. You had, you know, multiple wide receivers have big games today. Multiple running backs had big games today. The defense was flying around the field. So this is like as many wins like this as you can get. You can show that to recruits at just about any position and you can positively sell Miami. Uh, you, you mentioned, you know, heading into a bowl. If you do play a team like USC, you may have backup quarterbacks or even walk on quarterbacks on either side. Because again, man, if Van, the transfer portal opens on December 4th, Van Dyke might hit that portal. Jakari Brown might hit that portal. Emory Williams has a broken arm. He can't play. Uh, that's all the scholarship quarterbacks. Like Jaden George is a fifth year walk on quarterback. I, I didn't even realize this until recently. I think he's Jeff George's kid which is kind of a – that would be a good storyline if he were to start in a game and he's yeah. a walk-on quarterback. You know, maybe you have somebody like Brashard Smith, if he doesn't hit the transfer portal, have him play out of the Wildcats the whole game. I don't know what Miami's going to do at quarterback if Van Dyke and Jakari Brown, if if they decide to transfer. That's been my joke this whole time with trying to figure out the whole quarterback situation is, you know, Brashard Smith is staying. He was, a, he was a, a quarterback in high school. He runs the Wildcat. He's already taken a couple snaps. Yeah. Behind there, like, hey, let's let's just go have fun. Go see what happens. Your defense can eat and just see what the offense can can do out of that. Because at this point, it's yeah, it's a it's a it's one of those games where you just fire up the old video game and see, okay, what do I do if I put this guy here? Yeah. Uh, so l- l- last thing, um, what do you think in terms of positions? Miami's going to prioritize in the transfer portal. Uh, I think they're going to go hot and heavy to try to get defensive tackles here. Like I'm thinking like two or three, they need to get two or three in the portal. Cause I, I could definitely, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Leonard Taylor leaves. Uh, you know, we're hearing rumors that Jamil Burroughs may not actually stick on the team heading into next year. I hope that's not true, but the rumors have been out there. Miami doesn't have a whole lot of defensive tackle depth to begin with. So I think multiple defensive tackles, I think they're going to go after a quarterback probably defensive backs as well. Uh, what are you thinking for portal season? I was thinking the exact same thing. I mean, I know right. that your your depth, it really, just look at, looking at this year, I, we said it earlier on the show, but I'll say it again because I think you can't say it enough, really how important depth is in terms of what you put on the field from year to year. Uh, actually, uh, is that SP1? Sp- SP1? I don't know. Yes. I just call I just call him after. SP, yeah. SP. So that's Tallahassee wait. Kane. SP is the uh is the, the detailed data breakdown that you got earlier this week, right? Uh no, that was that was BP. Oh. Okay, there's too many, too many initials here. I'm I'm already I'm already <laughs> losing it. I could never run an offense as a quarterback because of this. But yeah, defensive backs, obviously, defensive tackles. Hey, one of them got a pick today. So yeah, that's right. it's great to see that our two of our interceptions, yeah. one came from that true freshman freshman Actually, lineman Pulliam. yeah yeah a uh, remote well and, and also like um shouldn't like they took the J- the james williams interception isn't on the stat sheet so did they end up not counting that play that was the hail mary at the at the half i thought and the acc officials are so bad like, they, they they had no idea <laughs> yeah. what they were doing but i thought at the end of the day the play ended up counting i but i guess they didn't count it but yeah my, yeah my thoughts were that the, I thought the play counted and that because the penalties took place after the clock had already hit zero, right. that the play just ends and there's no untimed down because it's just the play happened. It would be right. another down. And that by that point, it's the end of the quarter, end of the half. But yeah, I, I really like seeing the broadcasters finally kind of let the ACC to take a, an ACC term, really giving them the business in terms mm-hmm. of replaying, replaying things that just don't need to be replayed for that long. Or just getting things flat wrong. Like, granted, Miami didn't suffer from it today, but there was still stuff again that you could put on your reel and send up to Charlotte and just say, "What are you doing? <laughs> what, what what's going on here?" One, they missed that face mask on Jared Harrison Hunt, which I'm fine with because I'm sure he was being yeah. held, which is why he reached for the face mask. But yeah. there's a couple of ball spotting things these past couple of weeks. I'm just going, I don't know how we're getting out of bounds ahead of the sticks, and they spot the ball another two yards back. I was crazy. It's just, it's been something all year, but anyway, yeah. Going back to the whole the whole portal thing, depth is going to be the issue. I don't think you can. I think you can also look and look. You're going to look for everybody who's the best available talent, and I think you can really preach to to incoming freshmen who you're recruiting, and also guys through the portal to just say, 
even if you're not the premier starting guy, you're going to see significant playing time because you need to rotate people in fresh. Your highlight reel looks great when you're making plays because you're fresh compared to somebody else. So you're going to be playing great competition. If you can overcome awful officiating, you're even that much more prepared for the next level. So come on to Miami. You're going to be playing good guys. That's true. That's well said. Um, just last thing is you brought up the Ahmad Moten interception. That was an awesome mo- – anytime you get a thick pick – Yes. Uh, it's an awesome moment. And the way the way the entire team celebrated and like little moments like that make you realize like th- these guys really do love each other. And, you know, you don't obviously, you know, in certain teams around the country, we were concerned about this at Miami last year. Is there chemistry? Is it a bad locker room? Like when you see moments like that, you realize this unit really is together like th- this team. They love each other. And that was a cool celebration. I think that's one of the also the big takeaways of this season that goes into, you know, they don't stop fighting. They continue yeah. to play. They're not only playing for each other, but they're they're playing for the sake of like like the like coach said when he first came in, I'm looking for guys who love ball. I want guys who play, who like to play the game, who enjoy every single down of football, the ups, the downs, the downs make the ups even better, but they they do a good job of supporting each other. When you see younger players or players who don't get a lot of playing time make a big play and they get swarmed like that and not get penalized for the sideline, which is also great to see. That's what you want out of your team. And that, and that, and that makes it a more inviting environment for more people to come in to make plays. Cause at that point, they don't care if it's them not getting that on the stat sheet. They want to see the team succeed. And the fact that it looked like Miami football for the first time in a while of getting turnovers late in the game and then continuing to score late in the game. This was the first time that you could say uh, an old saying from, you know, a little bit of our day was they would say, put them in the trunk yeah. to say to end this game playing physical and just leaving it with an exclamation point. Might put them in the trunk today. Yeah. And you could say in Boston college, they put them in the mash. That's <laughs> 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 what they did, yeah. which yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. And it was nice to see. Yeah. They're six and five Boston college. Well, now they're six and six. Well, you know what? Might put them in the mash. And there's a lot of games where Miami is supposed to do that teams and they have it. So it's good right. to see that they finally did it. Amen to that. Huge thank you and shout out to Rudy Tamarchio for joining us. Follow him on X at Rudy Tamarchio. Uh, follow our show at Locked on Canes. By the way, if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. Uh, if you want to become a Locked on Canes insider, click the link in the show description below. Try it free for 14 days. Then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. If you don't, just ditch it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We give you guys uh, one-on-one text messages there, uh, show previews, recruiting notes. That's about to get very, very busy recruiting and transfer portal. So it's, it's a good time to get your two free weeks going on Locked on Canes Insiders. And uh, huge thank you. Uh, we, we don't often get to do live streams here just because my schedules get weird, especially after games. So I was happy we could do one today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Make sure if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like button, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to the audio version, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your pods. And we will talk to you guys again tomorrow. We got a lot of games tomorrow. No Miami games, so it's going to be a weird Saturday. Uh, but we got the game at noon tomorrow. We will talk to you guys next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.